Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video lecture, we will be discussing few questions from inherited change, which is the part of A-level biology 9700. Let's start. Question number three. Yeast cells respond to changes in glucose concentration in their environment by using transcription factors to switch off genes. So guys, uh, in this question, they are saying that uh, yeast cell has the ability to respond uh, to the changes in the glucose concentration outside the cell, right? And the yeast cells do this by some transcription factors which switch off some genes. For example, when glucose is present, what happens when glucose is present? MIG-1 transcription factors bind to promoters of five genes. MIG-1 binding to the promoters stops, represses transcription of these genes. So guys, what happens is that when glucose is present, there are transcription factors called MIG-1 transcription factors that can bind to promoters of five different genes. And as these transcription factors bind to the promoters, they stop the transcription of these genes. And basically these genes that are repressed by MIG-1, they code for five enzymes that allow the yeast cells to metabolize the sugar galactose when glucose is absent, right? So normally when glucose is absent, the five enzymes which are uh, illustrated in the passage these five enzymes are being produced in the yeast cell when galactose is present and glucose is absent right so when uh, glucose is present and galactose is absent so what happens is that the mig1 transcription factors they bind to the promoters of uh, the genes coding for these five enzymes, right? And uh, these genes, which are coding for these five enzymes, are then repressed. So these five enzymes are not produced and uh, glucose is metabolized, right? Because glucose is present, so galactose should not be metabolized, glucose should be metabolized, right? Uh, let's look at part A, complete table 5.1 to show three chemical differences between a transcription factor such as MIG-1 and a promoter. So guys, you should know that transcription factor is uh, basically a protein and promoter is the part of the DNA. So we need to state three chemical differences. And what is meant by chemical differences? We need to uh, write about the molecules, the molecular features, right? So uh, transcription factors or transcription factor is a protein whereas promoter is a dna it's a part of the dna right and what are what are the other differences uh, transcription factor because it's a protein it is made up of amino acid right made up of amino acids right and uh, dna because promoter is dna it is made up of nucleotides All right, what is the third difference? Third difference is that uh, because transcription factor is a protein, it contains peptide bonds, whereas uh, promoter is uh, basically a part of the DNA, so it contains phosphodiester bonds. Phosphodiester bonds. Okay, let's move on to part B. MIG-1 binds to promoter sites with these features. So guys, MIG-1, as we discussed earlier, they are transcription factors that can bind to promoters, right? So the MIG-1, they bind to promoter sites with these features, which means that MIG-1 will bind to a promoter that is 17 base pairs long, and that promoter includes a region of five repeating adenine thymine base pairs. So there should be five AT base pairs in the promoter for the MIG-1 to bind. And the promoter should also include uh, six uh, repeating cytosine guanine pairs. So there should be six cytosine guanine pairs in the promoter for the MIG-1 to bind. So these are the features of the promoter sites where MIG-1 binds. Promoter sites 
to which MIG-1 binds are known as MIG-1 binding promoter sites. Okay, bioinformatic techniques were used to analyze the yeast genome to look for sections of DNA that match these features. The information obtained for four chromosomes is shown in table 5.1. So guys, bioinformatics was used and what is actually bioinformatics? Bioinformatics, uh, te bioinformatic techniques involve the involved searching of the database in computers. So uh, we have the genome of almost all the species stored in the computers of the database. So we have the entire yeast genome, we have the human genome, right? We have the entire sequence of nucleotide bases of the DNA in humans, in yeast and the other species as well. And this all data is stored in the computers and bioinformatics is basically the use of computers to analyze this data, to search this data. So basically bioinformatic techniques were used to analyze the yeast genome, to look for sections of DNA, to look for sections of DNA that match these features. The information obtained uh, for four chromosomes is shown in table 5.1. So guys, table 5. Point, uh, sorry, table 5.2, not table 5.1 table 5.2 so guys table 5.2 shows uh, four uh, yeast chromosomes and the base pairs in each chromosome and the number of mig binding promoter sites per chromosome okay explain why bioinformatic techniques were used to obtain the information in table 5.2 so guys um, the bioinformatics technique was used because the sequence of nucleotide bases is already known is already known and is stored in database right so what we can do is that we can use the bioinformatics right if you want to find that uh, which part of uh, the yeast uh, DNA contains MIG binding promoter sites, we can use bioinformatics to uh, search these sites on the yeast genome because we know the entire yeast genome. The entire yeast genome uh, or the sequence of nucleotide bases in the yeast DNA is known and is stored in the database, right? That's why we use the bioinformatics. The sequence of nucleotide bases is already known and stored in the database. And uh, because uh, since the yeast genome is large, right? So we need to search it up. So in order to search for these sites for, for the base sequences, we need to use bioinformatics. The yeast genome or we can say the yeast genome or the yeast DNA is large. So the base sequence must be searched or the base sequence, base sequences in the MIG promoter sites need to be searched. Right. Basically, the base sequences will be uh, that um, there will be at least five uh, adenine thymine pairs and six cytosine guanine pairs. Right. So for that, we need to search it up using the database and the computer. Okay, so uh, part two, identify with the reason the yeast cell chromosome that is uh, most likely to include genes that code for enzymes that metabolize galactose. So guys, uh, we need to uh, basically uh, identify the chromosome of the yeast cell that is most likely to include the genes that code for enzymes that metabolize galactose. So guys, uh, the genes that code for the enzymes that metabolize galactose have uh, the promoter sites 
to which the MIG-1 binds. So the chromosome containing most MIG-1 binding sites, uh, for example, the chromosome D, is most likely to have uh, these genes. Chromosome D is most likely to have uh, the genes that metabolize galactose. Uh, sorry, uh, chromosome D is most likely to have genes that code for enzymes that metabolize galactose because the chromosome D has the most sites for MIG-1 binding. And we know that the genes that code for these enzymes, uh, they have promoters to which MIG-1 binds. So the chromosome, so the answer is chromosome D. And what is the reason? Chromosome D because it contains most MIG-1 binding sites. Okay, let's move on to the next part, part 3. MIG-1 binds to 27 promoters on these four chromosomes. Yeast cells also have other chromosomes where MIG-1 binds to additional promoters. So guys, they're saying that MIG-1 not only binds to uh, the promoters of uh, the genes coding for uh, the enzymes that metabolize galactose, but MIG-1 also bind to additional promoters, right? They can also bind to additional promoters. Five different enzymes coded by five genes must be made for each cell to metabolize galactose. Suggest reasons why an individual diploid cell has a larger number of MIG-1 promoter, binding promoter sites than the expected number of 10. So guys, uh, we know that there are uh, five genes uh, which code for the five enzymes that metabolize galactose and in a diploid cell, obviously uh, in a diploid cell, uh, we have uh, two copies of each gene, right? We know this, that in a diploid cell, uh, there are uh, two types of each chromosome. So we have two copies of uh, each gene, which means we have 10 genes coding for uh, the five enzymes that metabolize galactose, right? So uh, we know that there are five uh, different enzymes coded by five different genes. So if uh, five different enzymes are coded by five different genes, there will be uh, two copies of each gene. So there should be 10 copies in a diploid cell of the yeast uh, and the promoter sites should be 10. But they are saying that there are more than 10 promoter sites. We can see that there are 27 promoter sites, right? So what could be the reason for this? They are saying they suggest reasons why an individual diploid yeast cell has a large number of MIG-1 binding promoter sites than expected number of 10. There should be 10, but there are more uh, promoter sites. And why is that so? So what could be the answer for this? We can write over here that MIG-1 can bind to the promoters of other gene, other genes, or we can say MIG-1 regulates MIG-1 um, transcription factors also regulate the expression of other genes. of other genes besides with genes that metabolize galactose. So guys, we know that uh, genes which metabolize, genes which are involved in the metabolism of galactose or the genes which code for enzymes that metabolize galactose, uh, there, are beside, there are other genes besides these genes as well, uh, which can be regulated by me. What could be the other reason? Guys, the other reason could be that there might be more than two copies of the five genes, right? So maybe, maybe there might be more than two copies of the five genes. Normally, there are two copies of each gene in a diploid cell, but uh, maybe um, there are uh, more than two copies of uh, 
one of the five genes or we can say uh, two of the five genes there might be more than two copies of one or two of the five genes because of which there are um, more uh, MIG-1 binding sites than the expected number of 10. Let's move on to part C. The repression of uh, genes involved in galactose metabolism in yeast is similar to events at the LAC operon in the bacterium E. coli. Explain how E. coli represses the production of uh, proteins needed to metabolize lactose sugar. So guys over here they are uh, basically testing uh, the lac operon that's, uh, that which is included in our syllabus. So they are saying that the repression of the genes that we just saw uh, in yeast and that re the repression uh, which was involved in galactose metabolism. So it is uh, similar to the events that occur in uh, lac operon in the E. coli bacteria. So they are saying that explain how E. coli represses the production of proteins needed to metabolize lactose sugar. So if you recall, what happens is that there is a regulatory gene. There is a regulatory gene in the E. coli DNA. There is a regulatory gene. Regulatory gene which is known as gene I, right? which codes for a repressor protein and this repressor protein what it does the repressor protein binds to the repressor protein binds to the operator region on lac operon this prevents what this prevents binding of this prevents binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter to the promoter and transcription of transcription of leg Z leg Y and leg A doesn't occur right so this is what happens when um, E. coli repress the production of proteins needed to metabolize lactose sugar and guys this all happens in the absence of this happens in the absence of lactose in the absence of lactose or we can say lactose when we can say that um, repressor protein binds to operator in the absence of in the absence of lactose so guys we are done with this question now we will move on to the next question